I should also say a welcome to a very small now but faithful congregation that uh, worship with us on the line. Good to have you with us too. Father, we thank you that all of our doubts and fears are indeed met in you tonight of all. So we pray for ourselves, each one here, that by your Spirit we would have an encounter with the faith in the state who is indeed in grand world. start our service with hymn number 345, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from sin. Therefore let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus the Saviour of the world. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives who all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Sylvia. So, as a church, we are reading this book. Jesus 100. We started it last Sunday. It's a journey of, <coughs> excuse me, a hundred days to find Jesus, a hundred days to follow him, a hundred days to be like him. Tonight I'm going back to the very first day in the book, to the reading and the reflection that spring brought us from Christmas Eve to Christmas Day. I hope to colour in the lines of the story a little. The story that is told everywhere in children's nativities, Christmas cards and churches. A story that is familiar and yet never ceases to be wondrous and even life-changing. I will begin with the reading from Luke, chapter 2, 1 to 7. The Word became flesh and dwelt, dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinirius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the Christmas period, many people will be travelling to visit family and friends. To many, that is what Christmas is all about, family. This evening's reading tells us about a humble yet holy family travelling with their trusted donkey from Nazareth, a poor town, to Bethlehem, a kingly one. Not to visit family, but to be counted as part of a Roman census. Joseph, who was a descendant of King David, 
was required to go to his hometown, Bethlehem, and register there. Yet, when Mary and Joseph arrived, there wasn't anywhere for them to stay. No room with relatives, no room at the inn, just a stable. It was not an easy journey either. The route to Bethlehem would have taken them through mountains, and 90 miles is a long way to walk or even sit on a donkey, especially if you're heavily pregnant. I'm not surprised that Mary went into labor. This holy child, Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Messiah, Son of God, was not born into riches. There was no private hospital, or even a standard one, no midwife, no bed, no machines that were pink. Just a simple stable filled with animals, straw and the manger. Humble beginnings that made a memorable start to Jesus' early birthday life. Humble beginnings that reflect the very nature of a very different king. Staying and giving birth in a stable was obviously not Mary and Joseph's first choice, more like a resort, last resort. And to our modern ears, it sounds dirty, terrifying even. But trust me, there are far worse places to be, even today. And in my experience, a stable with animals is quiet, except for the old munching and the old animal noise. It's calm. It's incredibly peaceful and surprisingly warm. Last October, I went to see my son Josh, who is a farmer in training. He lives on a farm in Northumbria with his girlfriend Kirsty and their parents. While we were there, Josh proudly showed us around the farm. The fields, the stream, the reservoir, a new car that had just been born in the field. We saw Kirsty's dad, Robert, checking that both mother and baby were fine. And at the end of our tour, Josh took us into the barn. And as I walked in, I was transported back in time to my childhood, to our farm, and the barn filled with sheep waiting to give birth to their lambs. I would often sit in the manger and watch the youths give birth, checking they were okay, intervening if necessary, but mostly I just sat and watched and listened to the sounds of the animals, the rustling of the straw and the awesome sight of the arrival of new life. But what I loved most of all was the tremendous sense of peace that was in that farm. And I felt that same peace when I walked into the barn with Josh. No you this time, cows and cows, but definitely a <coughs> sense of peace. A shalom, if you like, and it was truly helpful. I imagine that same peace being present in the stable of Bethlehem, a peace into which our Saviour was born. Obviously we don't have any details about Jesus' birth. We don't know if they had any help or if it was a difficult birth. In all likelihood, it was probably just Mary and Joseph, and like the animals, they would have just got on with it, letting nature take its course. I bet they were terrified though. Giving birth is a messy and painful business, and Mary was so young and so innocent. We can only imagine what happened, or perhaps related back to our own experiences of childbirth. But what we do know is that Jesus was born, and born safe and well, born fully human, and yet fully God. He was born into the world, watched over by the animal and his earthly father. Just as Robert had watched over his cow and calf, just as I would watched over the youth all those years ago, just as my midwife watched over me when I gave birth to my children. Jesus, humble in every way, 
born in the most basic place, was also born into a peace that passes all understanding. And with his heavenly Father, he was watching over him there too. Watching over that very special <coughs> holy family. Now, Robin Gamble, the author of Jesus 100, asks some great questions in his book. In this particular reflection, he asks, if this is how the story of Jesus entering the world began, how did the story of Jesus entering your world begin? Where and when is your Bethlehem? Henry Hospital. 27th of December 1999 at 1.52 a.m. That was my Bethlehem moment. The moment I started a journey back to God that opened my eyes again to Jesus. It was an awakening of many times. That night I gave birth to my firstborn son, Josh. He was three and a half weeks early. I wasn't expecting that. I had planned to have him at a local midwife led unit, but instead I had to go to hospital. I didn't want the machines that go ping. I didn't want clinical. I wanted homely and natural. I'm not sure I wanted to stay with them. But babies tend to do their own thing. Look at Mary. I'm guessing she wasn't expecting the baby to arrive while she was in Bethlehem. She was certainly as one of her mum or at least a, a village lady to have helped her. But once in motion, labour tends to run its course, and the plans made often go out the window. Thankfully, most babies arrive safely, and that was the case with Jesus and with my Josh too. Sometime after having that job, and after Martin had gone home, I was put in a side room. I have a very vivid memory of the lights of the Christmas tree gently illuminating the world, the room. Well, my world actually, that point. At the centre of my world, there was a tiny boy, fast asleep, lying wrapped in a blanket in my arms. It was a real moment of peace, a moment of reflection and of realisation. It was a moment of calm before the storm of having a first storm, and we never know what that was. In my inner, most private place, I was a little terrified. I had no clue what to do with a baby, but there was this amazing love growing, and an amazing sense of God being present, present in the room, present in the peace, and in this incredible creation lying in my arms. <coughs> like Mary, I felt God watching over us, and I felt the birth of another in my life that night, the birth of Jesus. I didn't fully realise it at the time, but the enormity of giving birth made me rethink everything, life, birth, death, and a higher being overseeing it all, interacting with us and loving us. We only open our eyes and hearts to him. It was the start of a journey as a mother, and the start of a journey of faith in Jesus. My journey has taken me much longer than a hundred days, a journey that is refreshed each Christmas by the memory of two births. And as I still travel, still learn, still live, still make me sick, but I go on loving the baby, the man, the resurrected Lord, my Saviour and my friend. And on that journey there are ups and downs, and there is also peace. And as it says in John's Gospel, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. <clears throat> Mary was afraid that night, I'm sure of it. I was afraid when I gave birth. But in the presence of God, we both had peace. 
How Jesus comes into our lives is very personal. It will be different for each of us. But tonight, as we think about the birth of Jesus in that humble stable, let us take a moment to reflect on where he is in our lives today. Perhaps this Christmas, Jesus will be born in you for the first time. Or again. Or perhaps you are already journeying with him. But whether you start, restart, refresh, or continue, it will be an amazing journey of discovery of who Jesus is, who you are, and where you fit in. Because you do fit in. There is a place for each of us in God's holy family. So let Jesus open your mind, your heart, your mind, your spirit, and let him help you in your journey of life in all its fullness, with him and with all your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Because it's time, time to come home to your holy family. I will finish with a prayer from the book. Dear Lord Jesus, as you entered then, so may you enter now. As you entered there, so may you enter here. Beginning small and growing, beginning in my inner place and spreading out to my whole life. May we stand for the creed as we declare our belief. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, they have a dream with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and the conscious part. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We live for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please will you be seated as we bring our prayers to God. The response for me saying, Holy God, is hear our prayer. Holy God, hear our prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, in this holy night your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect you with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labour, brought your Son to birth. Hold in your hand all our friends who are ill or anxious or mentally troubled, 
and all who are in pain or distress. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to those recently bereaved and for those for whom the pain won't go away, and all who suffer in the sadness of our world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sang, Peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in our government and in all the nations, especially those seeking peace in Ukraine and in all the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love and open our hearts to the friends that we haven't yet met, who are alone in the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those that we remember who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, Hear our prayer. In this holy night, Christians the world over celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. Holy God, hear our prayer. Father, in this holy night, angels and shepherds wept worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph, and the saints, through him who is your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our next hymn is 503, O Little Town Bethlehem, 503.
Lord is here. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took our nature upon him, and was born of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that being himself without sin, he might make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself. Make once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Except through him, our great High priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in the songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are in our mind of it, because we all share in our mind. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts are unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs from the table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your great sins. So cleanse and lead us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in the Lord with him.
So we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live in the words of your grace and glory. And so may the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one thing, earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. And may the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, happy Christmas. We are going to stand and we are going to sing uh, properly the last verse, 491. O come, all ye faithful.